wanted to sit down for a minute and talk a little bit about a Facebook post that we made um, today, actually. Yeah. It's the day of our appointment. We have um, been struggling with infertility for about two years, at least two, two solid years of trying, um, one year of not preventing. Um, and it's been a pretty big struggle for us. Um, it's something that you feel like you really should, you should not have to try that hard for. Um, it's something that should just be able to happen. But in the time that we've been trying, we've done a lot of research and reading, and we've tried pretty much everything we feel like we could do on our own. And nothing that we did made us ever have a positive pregnancy result. Nothing seemed to work. Yeah. So it's just hard. It's really hard month after month seeing that negative test result. Um, and just by nature of what it is, infertility is so isolating and you start to feel like you're the only one that's going through it. What I want to do is try to help other people not feel so alone. It's hard to even know the right thing to say in the situation. Um, I'll kind of go off because you talked about, you know, the woman side of it. Well, the guy side of it's not easy as well because I know for, you know, what I've seen with us is, you know, you go through a cycle of, all right, we're trying, we're hopeful, and we're, we're broken down. Uh, and that seems to be the cycle for two years. Well, we'll have, we'll have three weeks of really good. And then once that negative test pops up, uh, I've mentioned it and I know I probably said it a hundred times. I've told Holly that, you know, I married her for her and not a baby making factory. That wasn't the, the thing that made, I was, you know, I loved her. I was attracted to her. I thought she was beautiful. Um, and I've told her all this stuff, but the hardest part for me is every month seeing her go through that very kind of depressed state. Um, Cause as a husband, I feel like my job is to always make her happy, always try to figure out what's wrong with her. And the hardest part is knowing what's wrong with her and not being able to do anything about it. That um, for the guy's side of it is very difficult to see um, and I'm not the best at showing my my feelings and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it's kind of hard for me and I've had to learn um, to be more open about my emotions with her and, you know, tell her where I'm coming from and just giving her um, words of encouragement and just telling her that, you know, whether we have kids or not, I'm going to be happy whether it's just me, you, and the crazy cats for the rest of our <laughs> life, or if we have, you know, a kid, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm fulfilled either way. Um, and that's, that's where, where I come, that's with the side that I come from. And I just know it's, it's hard on both sides. And I know, uh, you know, Holly and all the women who are going through this have such a, you know, difficult time with it. Um, and, and trust me, I, I, I'm going through this ourselves. I, I feel bad for all the people who have had to go through this and it's, it's rough. Um, but what we're doing with this video is there's such a, a negative connotation behind, you know, infertility. It's that, you know, secret that, you know, we keep behind locked doors. We don't want people knowing what we're struggling with. There's like a shame to it. And, and that needs to go away. I mean, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. If you don't want to have kids, that's perfectly fine. If you want to have kids and you're not able to have kids, you're not any less of a woman because you can't have kids. And that's, that's what I've had to try to instill in Holly, uh, just to let her know that you know, just because you don't have kids and because she's said it over and over that she feels like it's, she's less of a woman. And I was like, that's not the, it's not the case. I mean, you are, you're still a woman, whether you're a mother or not. Now we've obviously this video, we have been to a fertility doctor and we feel great about him. And uh, we really, yeah. really enjoyed Which, him. For um, me, you know, making that step and calling that fertility doctor was so hard. I mean, I had made the decision that I was going to do it. And it still took me 
several days to get the courage to pick up the phone. And it honestly took the <laughs> insistence of one of my good friends and coworkers to, to, did you do it yet? Did you do it yet? You know, kind of like keeping me on it to actually pick up the phone and call because that's like a very humbling thing. Um, and it's not, not that I'm prideful about that kind of stuff, but it's just, for me, I think it was scary to, to pick up the phone and, you know, admit that this is a problem that I need help with, that there's nothing I can do. I don't have any control over it and I, I need to get help. Um, but I'm very glad that I did. And I, I feel like I also want to address the, the issue of, you know, being a plus size woman and, and going through this kind of stuff too, is as an added layer of, of scariness. I have had some unfortunately unpleasant experiences at OBGYN offices in the past, um, just because there, there is a little bit of a size bias in the medical community. Um, it's, it's a documented thing. And especially in fertility, there's some doctors even in our local town that won't see you if you're at a certain BMI. So for, for myself, I did a lot of research and read a lot of reviews and called offices to ask before I went there, is there a BMI restriction that you have as far as treating plus size women? And my particular doctor did not have that. His office kind of acted like I was crazy for even asking, which was very reassuring. But I will say, you know, he, he was great. Um, the OBGYN I have right now, um, he also had no issue with my uh, my BMI and he was perfectly fine with helping me and he did a lot to help us too mm -hmm. um, leading up to this appointment. So I have to say I'm very blessed in the caregiver aspect and if you're if you're a plus size woman that lives in the um, Northwest Florida area, you can private message me and I'll, I'll share with you my doctors because I think it's always a good thing. Um, but it was, it was scary. I think that was the main, the scariest thing for me because I didn't want to go into this appointment today and be told, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Yeah. We didn't want them to take one look at us and yeah. be like, or, you before know, getting to know, cause we've, I say we've, it's all been <laughs> her and her body getting everything regulated. Um, because you know, her cycles were a little up and down, uh, to start with. And, and I think with us being so focused on it we were able to i mean she came in with charts she came in with uh, graphs right <laughs> so she, i mean she knew I did my homework she knew what her body was doing and, yeah. and and that you know i think that laid the floor and we're we're a lot more hopeful now than we were mm -hmm. and hope um hope is a very dangerous thing um yeah, it can be it can be wonderful and then it can be terrible because every month basically what happens is like a grieving process you know you you like you said you get very helpful and and you you're able to see okay well you know i ovulated this month then there's a chance and then you'll you'll have a two-week wait uh if you're lucky because <laughs> sometimes that doesn't always work out if you're having yeah. problems but you know then you have that that two weeks where you're you're kind of analyzing every little thing like you know everything and you're kind of like oh this this must be it. This must be the month because she would be yeah. having stomach issues yeah. or, or you know something she'll smell and it'll make her sick and yeah. she'll like, oh maybe You're and thinking, then unfortunately we take the test and it's, it. it's negative and, and then, then it hurts it and is, it's a, it's, it's a lot to lot to go through and like I said not being able you, to comfort her and be there and I'm I'm there for her I'm comforting her but it's it's something that you just you can't. There's, there's there's not a lot to get by it. You just have to go through the process. It's like every month you're mourning the death of what could have been. Yeah. Because you're in in your mind, you have these two weeks and, and you want to kind of like, you're just thinking of all the, all the timeline. Okay, well, if it was this month, then how many months until I would have the baby I'd be due at this time? And in between that time, like three months from now, there's this holiday and how can I surprise my family and do this cute thing on the holiday? And then when your period comes, all of that just goes out the window and you just feel kind of stupid for hoping, you know, like, and that, that's, it's just a, such a terrible, hard thing because you have to hold on to hope or you'll just give up. 
but if you hope too much, then you you just feel like the rug gets pulled out from under you, and it's it's rough. The the reason that we are making this video um, is to let people know that you know it's okay to talk about it. This is why, I mean, obviously this is not the most comfortable thing to do because we're doing it on a, a, no, a different scale than what most people would do besides talking to a friend. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know right. a lot of people who watch this are our friends. Uh, and if, you know, anybody is going through this, obviously we've been going through it for a while now. Um, we're more than happy to be there. I think faith has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes, Holly will talk and think that, you know, God's forgotten us or what, what have we done to, to be punished while, you know, all, all these things go through our head and I have to tell her, you know, God has a plan and our, God's plan could be for us to go through this valley. So once we reach this mountaintop, we can help you know, people who are going through that valley as well mm -hmm. to get to their mountaintop, whether it's with kids or without. We just, we know deep down that we are ready to be parents. We think that we would make Pretty good, parents. Pretty good parents, you know. <laughs> no one's perfect. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, clearly, you know, this is something that we want for our lives and we pray and uh, hope God, you know, takes us one way or the other to that end game that we want of having, you know, the hearing the pitter patter of little feet throughout the house and Growing them aggra family. aggravating the cats. Um, <laughs> we can't wait for that. Right now, the cats are our children. Yeah. And. <laughs> We just want to let everybody know that we love you guys and we're here if you ever wanted to talk. Part of the reason why we've been not super frequent with our, our uploads is that the whole infertility struggle that we've been dealing with is a roller coaster. It is. And it's so hard to to do lifestyle videos, which is what my passion is, and have this is such a huge part of our lives right now that we, we can't do this without talking about it because this is a big part of our life and we it's going to be a, a journey uh obviously we've been two years on this journey but we're about to enter into a new part of this journey mm -hmm. um and we feel like you know this is something that you guys would like to maybe like to follow along with us or um, we might be able to help and, somebody right again we love our our friends and family who have been able to have kids mm -hmm. we love you guys and we are super super ecstatic that you guys and for those have that and you know we <laughs> obviously we're not jealous we're not mad and, we're uh, happy for one you one of my good friends is pregnant right now and she has been one of the biggest supporters for me um even though she's going through a really happy time and I have some She's guys. She's been there for me and mine, and it's been a lot. Right, and I have a couple of guys in the group chat who, you know, have had kids, who have kids and who have had kids that's been very, you know, supportive as well. Um, so, you know, thanks for everybody that's that's been there. We love you guys. We're happy for you. Um, you know, it's just, it's a timing thing, and I know our time is coming. Yeah. Um, and I, like, in anything that you go through in your life, like, there there is a reason for it. And it's hard to know what that reason might be, but I think God doesn't bring pain without a purpose. And I've, I've felt called to kind of talk about this. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to share about it, you know, obviously what we can share. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're just here to be somebody that you can, you can not feel alone with. Like if you're going through this, you're not alone. Um, and that's the biggest thing that I want to, in part with everything that we're doing you, you're not by yourself you're not you alone, are not alone. <laughs> just know that there's somebody else out there going through the same thing and yeah, and we're, if, we're if you see here. you know if if you have a hard day it's normal you know just just let let it be a hard day and just don't i think the hardest thing sometimes is is if you don't talk about it with people then you internalize all that kind of stuff and it it just becomes a kind of toxic thing that and with things that you go through in relationships and marriage if you're going through a hard time they can either make you or break you and I think for us we've been fortunate that it's helped us I think we're stronger for going through all of this um you yeah know. we've had a roller coaster relationship ups and downs um <laughs> not not roller coaster relationship 
Well, We've yeah. We've been like, through a lot through the course of our relationship together. Severe allergic reactions. Right. We're not. Uh, um, we're, we're, I love you, mother-in-law. We're very fortunate that we're not like, we're pretty stable from day to day. Um, we, we always are together, you know. Um, we don't go to bed mad. We know yeah. um, we're in this relationship for love. Um, I respect her and love her um, with all my heart and always will. And I tell her this every time she goes through one of those rough patches um, yeah, and he's in this never journey. made me feel like it's my fault and I've never felt like it's his fault. We've never placed blame for any of this, which I think can happen. Because as the doctor said, birth is a miracle on its own because there's so many little things that have to fall in place perfectly which is why you know some people it will it can take just a couple of months and some people it takes longer i've known a lot of people who it's taken well over a year mm -hmm. to have a kid uh so and or longer right and we understand that it's a it, it's a journey and it it can be it, it can be hard but know that one way or the other there is a light at the end of the tunnel just know we love you guys and we're here for you. Uh, we know this is kind of a heavy, a heavy video. <laughs> Not all of them are going to be as, mm -hmm. as heavy. We're going to like sprinkle this in to we're, our normal content. Yeah, we're going to carry on um, now that we've kind of gotten the elephant off our chest or the <laughs> monkey off our back, whichever. Yeah. Um, and put this video out there because uh, I felt like this, like we've said, was the thing that was kind of keeping us from being able to do a lot more of these videos. Because um, so, we, we wanted wanted to talk about it, but I guess you have to. I had to wait until I was ready. And so you're going to see many more crazy Robbie videos uh, <laughs> where Holly's telling me I'm an idiot and. Sprinkled in will be the continuation of this lovely journey that we are on. And any prayers that you guys feel like sending our way, we welcome. Love you guys. Peace.